Yep, still here. I guess I, I think we can begin. Let's see. Yeah, that works for me. Okay, so uh, why don't we call the uh, East Lime Salem Cooperative Meeting? Let's see. Uh, East Lime Board of Education uh, uh, Salem Cooperative uh, Meeting to order uh, for January 25th, uh, 2021. Uh, and um, is there any public comment? I guess not. And we didn't have any written public comment on this meeting. So, uh, Sean, do you want me to keep, keep uh, uh, running it so you can keep your eyes on the road? Yeah, that'll be fine. I'll be I'll be at a at a computer in about five minutes. Okay. Okay, that's good. So we have the uh, minutes from our uh, meeting that we had last June eighth, uh, twenty twenty, and um, so I. Uh, uh, entertain a motion to approve those minutes and they were they're attached in the uh, it's Jamie I'd like to take make a motion to approve the minutes of the June meeting okay. thank you and any, anyone want to second that I'll second okay Tiffany seconds it uh, any corrections modifications to those minutes um, everybody on East Lime okay and everybody uh, in Salem all right yep Okay, so uh, Sean, you want to uh, you want to cast a vote? Uh, yep. So the motion's made. The motion's been seconded. Um, hearing no further discussion. All in favor to approve the minutes, say aye. Yeah. Aye. 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 So we're that's good. So we're all set there. Um, before we jump into our discussion action items um, uh, for the the meeting, um, Jeff, uh, would you like to? Say something, Newton, our superintendent in East Lyme. Yeah, you know, it, it's a great opportunity. We've got uh, you know, our Salem board members together with our East Lyme board members. And um, I wanted to just take a second to introduce uh, Deb Roselli Kelly. Deb Kelly has uh, been our uh, interim principal uh, this year and has uh, done a, an excellent job, you know, managing the high school in, you know, a pandemic and time of crisis. And uh, just wanted an opportunity to allow her to, uh, you know, Deb, you want to say hi to the Salem board so everybody can kind of see your face and put a name with a, Okay. Hey everyone, I know I've met some of you before, um, but uh, it's nice to see all of you in one place. And Deb has been our uh, um, one of our assistant principals for a number of years, uh, so she knows the building well and uh, has taken the, uh, the reins uh, this year and done a great job. So it's an opportunity for everybody to put a face with the name. Okay. Thanks, Deb. Great. Excellent. Excellent. So the first item that's up on our, for discussion and action is uh, the reconciliation of the Salem tuition rates for 2019-2020. Uh, I don't know, uh, is uh, Jeff or Joe, would you like to say something or you wanna turn it over to Kim and Mariana? Joe, you're good, yeah, I'm good as well. Why don't we just turn it right over to Mariana and Kim and we'll let them uh, you know, run through the reconciliation, go from there. Kim, are you? Do you want to start or say something? Do you want me to go through you, it? You can do it. You can do it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, obviously, Kim and I, 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 Kim and I have reviewed it, um, made sure you know she was okay with everything that I um, had put in there. We had just some minor changes from the original one to the audited version based on some audit changes, but again, uh, minor. The one thing I do want to point out, which is different um, from when. Um, we did the reconciliation the past two years is in special education. There were some expenses that we were not capturing that are um, for the high school as a whole that would be obviously available to both the um, East Lyme students and Salem students that was not um, on the reconciliations in the past. And that would be, um, it's on page three. Um, and I'll get to it, but I just wanted to just uh, let you guys know ahead of time and then we can review it. But we have a behavior analyst, an occupational therapist, and a physical therapist. And obviously that those are district-wide. So those, those salaries are distributed amongst the five schools. So when we get to that page, you'll see, for example, the behavior analyst, the salary is only 14,000 because that's just um, what's apportioned to the high school um, and it's divided by all the schools. Um, and then we also have some literacy um, teachers that, again, those services are um, 
used by both East Lyme and Salem students, those teachers salaries were not included in the past. And again, I've included that in the special ed salaries to capture truly what the costs are for special ed services. Um, so I'll start with the first page of the um, reconciliation. Should I share my screen or do you guys have it all available? I'm not sure if I have the ability to share my screen. Um, let me try just so that. Um, you can do so, Mariana, too, if you get. Let me let me see if I can. If I can't, then um, I may okay. um, ask you to do it. Uh, yep, it's letting me. Okay. Okay, so can everyone see my screen? So this is uh, obviously the yep. cover sheet, but we'll just go right to the first page. So the first page, and if anyone has any questions, what I'll do is kind of go through the first page and then stop, and um, then we'll continue on. But basically, the first part is the calculation of regular tuition. I pull that information from our EFS, which is the end of the school year report. That's used to be, for some of you that have been on this board a while, it used to be the old ED001. The state revised that is now the EFS. So those costs are pulled right from that report. I then um, reduce, subtract that, um, subtract out any special education costs to come up with my regular education expenditures. That is then um, the high school is allocated based on a percentage of enrollment on um, the cost. So for the high school, the 14,000, 26,000 is what's allocated since 37.66% of the students are at the high school. Um, I then reduce that um, by our transportation. So we have a per pupil cost before transportation of 13,859.99, um, reduce the, the transportation and um, with the 13,416 plus the surcharge, which is per the agreement. Um, and you'll see that breakdown in the next page. And then the second half is the special education um, tuition calculation. And basically it is a cal I'm using our, and, and all the support has um, been sent to Kim and I believe I, I might've attached it here, but if I didn't, Kim has all the support as well. But basically it's our expenditures for our uh, central office SPED administration, our district-wide SPED administration, um, non-certified um, special ed staff. Um, so all of our various secretaries that uh, support special education services, then um, special education supplies, which again, you'll see a further breakdown on page four. Um, then that's reduced by 15% and the rationale for that one, it's in the um, agreement, but the rationale is so like social, uh, any, um, psychologists or guidance counselors or anyone that's charged to special ed, the state says 15% of that really um, should be uh, regular education services. So that's reduced to come up with our base district-wide um, special ed costs. And then specifically the line 18 is all of our, all of the special education costs that are attributable just to the high school and a further breakdown is on um, some following pages. So we'll, um, we'll go over that. But again, I come up with the per pupil cost of um, 16,713 plus the district wide salaries um, per pupil. So it's 17,847.61, which is what in the agreement we call the premium based tuition. And that gets added to the regular ed tuition to come up with the SPED tuition for Salem for NEC, uh, the reconciled tuition rate, and again, plus the surcharge. So the total SPED um, tuition for 1920 reconciled is 31,337.25. So does anyone have any questions on that? And this provides the basis for anyone that's new we're always a couple years behind. So we're reconciling 1920 because obviously those are the costs that are most recent. And then we look at that and on the next page, you'll see where we come up with the tuition cost for 21-22.
Are there any questions on this page from anyone? I have one question. Yeah. Uh, this is Jen Dayudo. So when the, when the town gets reimbursed by the state for special ed costs, are those already taken out of all these numbers? Those are, so the reimbursement for special ed that we receive from the state is excess cost grant and that's tuition for outplaced students. None of that is included in here. So our, our reimbursement for special ed is excess cost grant. Um, and that is, again, tuition for out of district place students and none of that is included in this SPED calculation. Okay. The only thing included in here, just so everyone's um, clear is any um, are any SPED high school teachers, high school special ed teachers, or any other special ed um, employee like uh, the behavior analysts or OT or PT services, any para that is directly, that is just for the general special ed population. So any one-to-one -one para um, for our high school students is not included in here, nor are any paras for Salem. Those are billed separately. So if you have a student that needs a one-to-one -one, um, aid, that would be billed separately because it's really not fair to bill Salem for all of our aids when you know you might have three students that perhaps need a one-to-one -one aid and we might have five or six. So those are completely taken out of the equation. Does that answer your question? Anyone else? Oh, anyone else? Or? Okay, I'll go to the next page. And again, we can always revisit. So the next page is, again, it's it's based on the reconciled rate. Um, and the, the surcharges, again, it's, it's in the um, it's in the agreement. And every year, the agreement says we add a dollar. So since we're um, two years behind, that's why you see that there's $2 added um, to that because it's a two, it's two years worth of the surcharge. And then the contract increase again per the um, contract, uh, per the agreement is two and a half percent. Since we're doing two years, we add on 5%. So we take that 1920 reconciled rate, add 5% and a $2 for the surcharge, and we come up with the tuition uh, the proposed tuition rate for 2122, uh, which is 14162, and the special ed tuition, which is 32902. And then the next page is um, that's the detail that makes up where I had um, explained. I put initials obviously just because it's a public document, but here are our literacy teachers, these are our general special ed teachers, our speech person, um, our two psychologists, then um, the salaries that I had mentioned before, behavior analysts, our occupational therapist, and physical therapist. And then these are the paraprofessionals that are strictly um, at the high school for general um, SPED education. It's not devoted to one particular student. It's just they're there to assist our whole um, SPED population. And then we have our secretary that services the special mm -hmm. education department. And then the following page is just our um, listing of supplies um, specific at the high school and then our district-wide supply that um, ties to the front of the sheet. And again, we, um, we reduce that by 15%. Um, and then the last pa uh, page five is the reconciliation of what was paid by Salem versus what should have been paid. So again, because we're always two years behind, so we did the, um, we calculated the rate for 1920 in based on 1718 expenses. So um, for the 1920 year, Salem paid a total of 2 million, 772,526, but really what should have been owed is 2,894,207. So there was a, a underpayment of 121,680. That will be divided by 10 and will be added to the, uh, the invoicing for next year for 21,22. The past two years have actually been, you guys have overpaid. So we have reduced um, your invoice this year um, based on the reconciliation. It's an over, um, it's an underpayment, so that'll be tacked on next year. 
And then the next page is just the backup of where I got the enrollment, which is right from the state of Connecticut PSIS system, and just the calculation of the um, allocation for the high school. And then the last page is just right from our agreement and it kind of just kind of spells out the formula. Uh, and that's about it, unless anyone has any um, questions on any of this. Nice job. Any questions? Maybe you can put the uh, screen back up. Um, sure. The first, which? The um, pictures. The picture. <laughs> I think I have them up. You guys can't the see them? But just, no, I can, stop, no, we can see sharing. that. I just, I can't see everybody at the same time. <laughs> oh, 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 stop sharing. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> I gotcha. There you go. So, mother, uh, nice job. Uh, and uh, Kim from Salem, do you have anything to add? No, no. We I reviewed everything, and um, Mariana and I are in agreement that this, these are the correct numbers. Okay. <clears throat> any anybody have any questions? No. Nope. Okay. And that um, the. Uh, Underpayment is then um, billed what on a, on a monthly basis over the yes. next year. Yep. Okay. Sean, anything from your perspective? No. No, I think um, no, I think that makes sense. <clears throat> Last, uh, and this takes in. So, I know in the past, at the end of the year, we had some invoicing that caught some of us by surprise. So this factors that all in, right, Mariana? No, nope. I think so we've, res that's where um, I think now we are all on the same page with that. We revised the agreement, I believe in May or June of last year. So, um, Kim, and Kim can correct me if I'm wrong, but right now, basically any one-to-one uh, -one aid that is for a Salem student is billed at the end of the year, but, um, Kim and the special ed coordinator from <clears throat> Salem and his director are all in contact so we know who um, who the one-to-one -one aides uh, one-to-one -one students are and the aides and we bill we will bill them at the end of the year so we paid for those one-to-ones correct in June this <clears throat> past June correct so the message I just heard was there'll be no surprises, right? That is my hope. <laughs> no, right. There's, I mean, unless again, the only surprise would be if a new Salem student, high school student moved into Salem and needed a one-to-one -one aid. But again, it wouldn't be a surprise in that obviously Salem staff would know that this is a student that needs to one -to a one-to-one -one aid. So if we thought we had three, if in March, you know, a student moves in that needs a one-to-one -one aid, um, that would be an additional aid that we would need to hire for that student. But again, everyone is on the same page and obviously there's a discussion. We wouldn't just hire the aid without right. the input from Salem. So Tim, does that get us to um, on the agenda 3A action item for um, approval of the reconciliation to tuition rates? Yep. Yeah. I mean, that would be, that would be, so we would, uh, would anyone like to make a motion to uh, move to approve the reconciled Salem tuition rates for 2019-2020 as follows the base? I will. Tuition Tim, rate. I'll make a motion to approve the Salem tuition rates for 21-22 as follows. Base tuition rate $14,162.45, high school special ed per pupil base rate $17,847.61, and the premium tuition rate of $32,902.44. Did we have a second? Would you like to second that motion? Kate? Kate second it? Okay. Um, that's Kate Steele. Uh, so, uh, any further discussion on this on this one? And just to refresh our memories, uh, Sean, um, the way it goes is if you just check that your if your board is a okay, and I check if our board, the sign board, is okay, 
And then what we do is we each, each board chair casts one vote um, for or against or abstain uh, to, to, to uh, pass the motion, so. Yep. So is everybody on East Lime okay? Salem, thoughts, good, okay. Sounds good. All right, all in favor of approval of the motion on the table by the board chair say aye. 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 Okay. So that passes. We'll get this down yet. Um, so Sean, you wanna uh, you wanna handle the next item? Three B. Yeah, three B. Same thing. Do we? Um, so we talked about the tuition rates for twenty one, twenty two, right? No, that's what that's what this one is. To make uh, right. Hey, then that means I read the wrong motion. Guys. Yeah, I, you, you blend, I, I think we blended. Motion. Yeah, we I blend today and be together. I read together the there. 3B motion. <laughs> I think you should no. circle back and do that. Sorry. The so let's, let's try that. Let, let's try it again. Okay. I'll, let me read the motion then. Move to approve reconciled no. Salem tuition rates for 2019 right. 2020 as follows The Salem based tuition rate of $13,489.64, Salem total premium tuition rate of $17,847 and 61 cents and a total for a total underpayment of $121,680.91 as presented. Um, so that's the motion. Anybody like to make that motion? I'll make it. Oops, sorry. That's all right. And, and the second, what do you want to second? Kate raises her hand, that's a second. Um, Okay, so uh, Aaron, everybody okay? Any slime with this? Same question for Salem. Yep. Okay, so uh, East Lime votes aye. Salem votes aye. So that passes. Sorry for the confusion there. Okay, so now we'll move on to uh, 3B. And Sean, you can uh, handle this one. Right, so 3B is the proposed Salem tuition rates for uh, Salem students attending East Line for 21-22. Yeah. Right. Okay, so does anyone dare to make a motion? Um, Can we just reuse my old motion? <laughs> we, we could. <laughs> Jamie, why don't you go for, uh, you want to reiterate that or how, Tim, sure. how do you want to handle that? I go, reiterate go. my motion. <laughs> <laughs> do you really want me to read it all again? Oh, uh, yeah, well, you probably, yeah, you probably should. Right. Yeah, for, for the record, I would like yeah. to make a motion to approve the Salem tuition rates for 21-22 as followed. Base tuition rates, $14,162.45. High school special education per pupil base rate, $17,847.61. Premium tuition rate, $32,902.44. Okay. okay. Did... um. Kim or uh, Mariana want to say anything about uh, the motion that's on the table? If... No. no. And did we get a second on that? I'm sorry, I apologize. I see uh, Kate raised her hand, so we got a second. Okay, so motion's been made a couple times and seconded a couple times. Salem, you guys still good? Okay. You slime? We're good. All right. Salem votes aye. And East Lime votes aye. Okay. So we'll move on to uh, the next item, which is uh, for discussion, and it's an update on East Lime Public Schools superintendent's proposed budget for 2021-2022. Jeff, do you want to say something? Yeah, sure. I can give a quick uh, synopsis uh, as it pertains to uh, East Lime. Um, we've had uh, two uh, workshops um, so far. We had one on uh, December 14th and then another board meeting slash workshop on January 11th. Um, so the board's you know, pretty familiar with where we stand with our, our numbers and our percent increase requests uh, over this current fiscal year. Uh, a lot of our focus uh, for next year and, and you know, what we're looking for for supports going into next year is a derivative of uh, what we've experienced you know, this year with, uh, with the pandemic. Um, case in point, you know, technology, 
we uh, were not we were not previously a one to one district with devices. Uh, we rapidly rolled that out um, between uh, the start of this school year and got it all done by December 15th, where we deployed 2,500 student devices across our district, uh, 550 new teacher laptops uh, for and for paraprofessionals as well, uh, 300 document cameras and 250 pairs of headphones to go along with those. So a uh, huge undertaking, um, but uh, you know, kudos to Amy uh, Drown and her team. Uh, the tech team for, for pushing uh, all of that out uh, and we're, we're underway. So we have to keep that going now. So that's part of, you know, where we're looking at, you know, for, for next year. And I'll kind of jump to what our needs are and what we're looking at for next year. Um, and a couple of those staffing items, uh, as we think about, you know, the, the gaps in achievement that student, uh, students will probably display and, and the supports we're going to need to put in place at the high school level specifically, because I know that pertains, you know, to having Salem here, uh, we're looking at uh, the addition of 1.0 uh, FTE high school social workers. Um, so we have one there now, we're looking to add one more social worker at the high school to support uh, students. Uh, both through our therapeutic program as well as our regular ed students. We're also uh, looking district-wide for the addition of a certified occupational therapy assistant, um, two elementary math coaches, uh, one middle school math coach, uh, some addition of some paraprofessionals, and uh, the addition of uh, some elementary teachers, both potentially at K, because we feel like a lot of parents held back, and I'm not sure, you know, Joe, if you're seeing this too or thinking about this, I'm sure you are, you know, how many parents might have held back their kindergarten children for this year, who will we will now see next year. So we anticipate an increased number there. And for us, we've got some higher class sizes at grade two. There's been a cohort that's gone through K-1, and now they're uh, going to be moving into grade two that we feel we'd like to try and reduce uh, the class sizes there and add some teachers. So uh, all in all, um, our budget is up. Uh, over the current fiscal year uh, by 4.05%. Uh, and uh, I'll present uh, a final um, PowerPoint and we provide our board of ed all the information. Um, this afternoon, we push that out so everybody has it and we'll start our process tonight. So that's kind of a quick synopsis of where we are with the East Lime, uh, East Lime budget. Any questions yeah. at all? Or? Hey, Jeff, so Sean, so real quick, um, middle school math, um, coach, I, I, maybe you said it, but maybe I missed it. What was your, what was the driving need on that one on your side? Just out of curiosity. Our, our math score, Sean, uh, when we, when we move kids from fourth grade to fifth grade, we're seeing across the board, uh, a continual dip, uh, in, uh, in math scores. So we're looking to provide some additional support at the middle school level uh, to help offset that, uh, as well as build up those supports at the elementary. Cause right now we have one elementary math coach that goes across three schools, three buildings, um, and each building has their own dedicated literacy specialist. So we're looking to, to ramp up that support at the math level. Was that a, was that, um, was that data uh, point a blip or had that been a trend that you guys have been witnessing for a while? That's been a trend for a while. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So hey, Joe. Out have we in the same grades, I mean, we're doing the same curriculum. Have we, have we noticed something similar? Um, we've noticed some fluctuations and we do have a math interventionist in place and we've made some staffing changes in our math. Um, so we have experienced a similar uh, phenomenon as, as Jeff has, he and I have talked a bit about that. Yeah. I know we've, I know we've talked about that topic in the in the past and I know we've made some changes. It's just interesting when you now go cross outside the district mm -hmm. um, if other districts are seeing something similar and if it's those same grades if there's something beyond the within the confines of the district that's going on so it's interesting. Mm -hmm. Thanks Jeff Jeff one last thing so if you're going if um, your proposed budget's going up just over four percent, it sounds like you're making um, substantial investments. What's what are the big offsets that are that are keeping it to only a four point something percent increase? Well, uh, initially out of the gate, um, I had uh, reduced with uh, when we went through all the principal's budgets, we reduced about three hundred and thirteen thousand uh, dollars. A lot of that, you know, in supplies um, in some different areas. Um, yeah, three, oh, I'm sorry, 316,888 dollars we reduced uh, to get it down to a 2% uh, over the current fiscal year. 
Uh, and then we had unanticipated costs this year. Like we had to add a, a special education teacher in um, at uh, Flanders School. We had to add uh, an IT technician in because of all the devices now we're in district. Um, custodial support, you know, with all the maintenance, uh, cleaning and so forth. So it drove it back up um, to 2.76. And then all of those folks that I just mentioned uh, that we're adding for next year was an increase of $730,000. Uh, which bumped it up to 4.19. And then through our FFO or subcommittee of the board and some additional work, we cut it back uh, about 155,000, dropped it back down to 4.05. Are, um, are you factoring in any CARES funding for next year on any of the IT stuff on the tech side? Not for next year. Well, I take that back. There's supposed to be a, another round that's coming out. I thought we'd hear today that districts uh, should be getting some additional money, which is good through 2023. So we can use and apply that money potentially for next year. The exact amount is, is unknown. Joe, did you see anything? Uh, it was supposed to maybe come out, but I didn't see anything that came forth. No, we saw the um, email from Fran and from Jan, and then we got a late um, email from Anne Marie but it just it just details dates and uh, says we'll be contacted for our amounts. So that that allocation, Sean, for us in East Lyme is supposed to be double what we receive for our Title One funds. Title One, we received just over two hundred seven thousand dollars. So if we could double that and we get you know four hundred and fourteen thousand roughly, that would be great for us to be able to apply potentially you know some of that to next to next year uh, as it pertains to needs. All right. I guess, Jeff, my last question is, so um, last year to this year, this year to next year, your um, rate of state reimbursement, so that's reduced this year into the next budget season. Did, were you, was that by the percentage that you guys were factoring or any surprises on that front? Um, I don't think there was any real surprises. Mariana, I know, you know, EC, both between ECS and excess cost, they did go down um, some, but that, we, that was projected. Uh, to start creeping down. So I think that's something we need to be cognizant of as we move forward uh, both with both of those. Amy, did you want to say something? I saw that you, you uh... Oh no, I was just gonna add in in regards to the math coaches and just at the middle school level, I think one of the things that statewide is a trend, statewide there's a dip that occurs from the first year of middle school. And it's been, it's been happening for probably about a good 15 years now, where no matter where you start at the elementary, so whether you're now, you're a middle school, I mean, that starts at sixth grade or you're a middle school that starts at fifth grade in our case, that transition, there is a consistent dip statewide. And then there's this increase and then a lot, and then there's a natural dip that goes seven to eight and then you hope to, to acquire it to go back up. The problem with us is that the dip got too, too, too deep, if you will, to the point of discomfort. And that we need to hone in on some targeted skills. And then as we were working on curriculum revision with our high school um, and looking at Algebra 1 and looking how students are leaving our middle school, we need to ensure a true mastery of certain skills and targeted interventions at particularly that sixth grade time so that we're reaping the benefits of those interventions and really transitioning more confident mathematicians into high school. Hmm. And that's really my target um, for coaches is I'm looking for highly qualified people to be servicing our students who are in need of gap closing. Um, rather than a paraprofessional that might meet with a student, um, I, we're looking to know we want certified, trained professionals yeah. who can actually hone in and close in on those gaps. So I, I was just going to add in. Thanks, Tim. Sure. That's good, Amy. Thanks. Any other questions for Jeff? Okay. Sean, we'll turn it over to you for the next one. Uh, sure. Uh, Joe. Sure, I'll just give a quick overview and entertain questions. So the percentage increase is just a little more than yours is 4.62. Un unlike Jeff, I didn't remove anything, Jeff, because this year, um, because of where it came in, I thought it was important for the board to see all of the requests that came forward. The, uh, the, two, um, the two areas that are, um, a, a little different is like you, Jeff, um, we, we did add a third 
kindergarten teacher to our proposed staffing um, because we also felt a lot of parents held back this year. And between that phenomenon, the number of um, students that NESDEC has predicted, uh, we would actually be pushing very high with three teachers if all of those numbers came forward. I don't think it's going to pan out quite that way because of where we are with the pandemic. But um, <clears throat> if uh, if things hold true, we will have the additional teacher in um, kindergarten. Uh, we, we accomplished that through moving staff around. So we don't have a net increase of an FTE at that place. So that's good news from, from a budget point of view. The other change in staffing is that we had a retirement um, of a person that had started in our district as a technology teacher. And then we moved over, moved her over to being, becoming a technology coordinator, instructional, uh, I mean, um, um, a um, technology um, assistant coordinator. So we were uh, in the process of um, doing some revamping and we repositioned it from a certified position to non-certified. Um, in the column of no deed, good deed goes unpunished, when she had asked me to be reduced years ago from 1.0 to 0.6, it started as 0.8, then 0.6. I, I agreed to that. It had to do with personal matters and uh, taking care of elderly parents. In retrospect, I probably should have kept it at 1.0 and divided her position with someone else, but I can't undo that. But what I can do is present to our board and tomorrow night I'll do that at personnel. The logic behind um, creating with LEARN uh, a consortium for technology. Um, so I've been involved with Jack Cross at LEARN and uh, Roy, uh, the superintendent in Preston to uh, see if we could put together the essential skills that our person provided for us. And they were, they were quite robust. So, um, Again, tomorrow night I'll be presenting to our personnel committee a detailed outline of that, but that does increase that line item in the budget from about 41,000 or so um, to about 70,000. But it would be a, a <clears throat> comprehensive approach to filling the position of this person that retired. So those are sort of our two um, staffing areas that, that are a little bit different. The uncertain part of our budget and um, the budget committee and the board of ed in Salem will, will be wrestling with this next Monday is I announced my retirement in the fall and I, I put it out for August the 15th so I could assist um, getting through this year and setting up for next year with the uncertainty of the pandemic. And um, we have a study committee that the board approved um, a couple of weeks ago and, and Many of you on the screen will know the, the characters from CABE that are going to assist the uh, Salem board, and that's Mary Broderick and um, <clears throat> Jack Reynolds. And so tonight, after this meeting, they're going to conduct their first um, session, <clears throat> excuse me, with the Salem board to, do, um, to accomplish two things. One, study um, and discuss with the board about a recommended administrative structure for Salem. And then secondly, once that's agreed upon, uh, perform the search for uh, the next superintendent. So that's exciting on one hand, a little nerve wracking uh, for board members because it does require um, a lot of thoughtful engaging along the way. Um, it's about 11 years ago when the Salem board decided to experiment with part-time. And um, <clears throat> Kay Griffin was the first part, she was an interim. Uh, part-time superintendent. She also performed a search. She found me lurking uh, out there. And so I'm the I was the first permanent part-time superintendent. Um, nine years ago, it was 0.6 because the state allowed um, for that. And then of course, there was a change a few years ago that the maximum was 0.45 for retired Connecticut educators. So long-winded answer, but our board has to wrestle with how to reconcile that in the budget. Um, we did not include anticipated COVID expenses in the budget. Our feeling was we would keep those separate. And now the board has to kind of decide how do they manage if there's an increase in cost for my replacement or an administrative structural change? What, what should that look like when at this point we don't know, uh, you know an exact number? 
So it is a bit of a challenge for our board, but they're up for the uh, challenge. And I know, I know that um, at the end, they'll make, you know, make a very good decision about that. I'm trying to think, I think, Kim, is there anything else in our budget that would interest the folks on the screen? I don't think so. I think you, you hit all the high points. Yeah, I avoided the low points. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> um, any questions about uh, the Salem budget? Like I said, it's 4.62 as we sit here. Next Monday, Kim will make some, some minor revisions. One actually is in the reconciliation amount. When we first put it in, it was unaudited. We, had the, we now have the audited amount from Mariana. So that'll go back in. That number will change a little bit by virtue of a couple of changes that we have. But the budget committee and then the board next Monday night will start to do the work of, um, you know, taking it line by line and deciding what, you know, what stays, what goes, what gets trimmed, what might get added. The same fund that you're going to have later on tonight. Sean, anything else about our budget that you'd want to add? No, I guess the only thing I'd point out is so. Um... It's funny. So, I mean, I know East Lime, you guys are in the exact same position, but last year it seems like we were presenting and we were presenting our budget um, to our board of finance, something like March 13th, Friday the 13th, the day, literally the week, the, the week before this, the state shut down uh, for COVID. And just like anything else, a budget's uh, planned for execution for the next year and best laid plans, just like everybody else, you know, went to hell in a handbag real quick. Um, this year was anything but the way we planned. And same thing with um, contracts. So we're in a multi-year contract situation on a number of fronts, one of them being transportation and COVID did great things to the world of transportation for school districts. Are you guys doing anything special with that or are you keeping it as, as it was? No, we're, we're pretty much keeping it as it was. Mariana, we didn't, nothing changed in that world as it pertains to transportation, correct? No, correct. I, I um, am assuming that come September, we will be in um, you know, full session and budgeted accordingly for transportation. That actually, that's a really good point, Mariana. So when, when you built your budget, your budget is based on the premise of next fall, when you guys go back, you're going back out of COVID controls type deal? Yes. Correct. Yep. Same as us. Yeah, you know, we basically went back to a normal, you know, straightforward budget. A um, little bit of concern, though, as Joe and I heard, you know, last week that um, there, there's discussion uh, and our districts are asking the question, too, you know, are we going to end up potentially having to provide a virtual program or the option for virtual again going into next year? There's a cost for us with that, which you know, we, we did not put into, you know, our operating budget for next year. So kind of watching that closely because that could potentially be impactful for us. I, that's why I, I unmuted. It's a lot of discussion at the superintendent level. Jeff and I are part of a weekly meeting with the fellow superintendents of LEARN. And um, there, is a qu there is quite a concern um, about offering the option of virtual learning next year. Um, we learned last Thursday that apparently there is a, um, a lobby group of, of folks um, lobbying the legislature to actually um, enforce an option for next year. And of course, you know, the superintendent's organization is, is hoping to convince the State Department uh, not to offer that option. Um, we're all committed to taking what we learned this year and perhaps providing options for students that include um, some combination of distance learning or students that perhaps are ill for a period of time to to maintain uh, their studies, but um, having a, a wholesale option in the state is going to be quite costly. And mm. as Jeff said, we're, we're waiting to get more news on that. I don't think the Department of Public Health or Department of Ed will rule on that until much later when they know the state of the pandemic going into next year. But uh, Sean, to what you said, I think all of us uh, made a decision to prepare our budgets as if we're in person, you know, full in person. Uh, we do think there'll be some mitigation strategies that'll have to be maintained. Uh, there may be mask wearing, that's very possible. Um, and certainly the level of, um, you know, uh, cleanliness will be important. Uh, distancing, I think, to, to what extent is possible, but we're hoping that we can include all students going back. 
tonight on the four o'clock, I saw the governor in a brief news conference. He's very concerned about March and April of this year. Um, very, you know, Jeff and I have now heard this two weeks in a row on the DPH Tuesday morning call. There, there is such a, an amazing concern for um, a potential spike mid-March into April with the, um, you know, what's commonly called the European or British uh, variant. Uh, you're probably hearing things about double masking, et cetera, but there is a huge concern about a potential spike. So we'll, we'll have to see where that takes us. That's particularly troublesome for us as, you know, we were in the process of starting to look at, you know, trying to bring back potential K to two or K to six, you know, in, uh, you know, full in person. Um, so, and, uh, you know, that, that's, that's something that we, uh, we're going to have some ongoing discussions about as we move forward. John, you're on mute. That helps. Um, so last summer, when you all worked last summer, putting together plans for how are you going to reopen and operate, how how strictly are you guys adhering to that plan that you guys worked all summer on? It, it is morphed greatly, Sean. Uh, I would say we actually have talked, you know, at the uh, central office level of, you know, might be time for, you know, version 2.0 sort of thing as we roll out the rest of this year. Um, so it has definitely, uh, it has definitely changed. I mean, it's like what we didn't know back then, uh, you know, kind of like what we know now, if we could have used it, you know, back then, things would have been a lot different and we probably would have designed a plan, a reopening plan a little bit differently as well. Uh, just the fear of where masks even going to work. Uh, or not going to work. Um, and we took a gamble out of the gate with our, our preschool, our, um, our summer program, um, with having, you know, preschoolers and kids coming back for summer school that uh, were wearing masks and not knowing is this going to be effective. Um, and it, it worked out. But so it's definitely going to be time for some shifting there as you look at next year. I would say, too, um, we pulled off the instructional pathways. <laughs> we created them completely blind and we pulled them off. We have hundreds of children in each one. So, um, but I think the components of them are what we watched evolve because one of the things we realized is that we needed to be responsive to parents. That the bottom line was that parents were having our students more in their home than we were having them in our classrooms. So we need to evolve our model so that it took into account um, parents as co-creators of our instructional models with us and what are ways that we can really be a community around each of those pathways. But I don't think we could have projected either the movement between the pathways. Um, and, and, you know, I do all the cohort changes for the district as far as a communicator. And I mean, we are, we are over 730 cohort changes since the start of the year. So we have had some serious movement yeah so okay anything else on that one no well, i Great. think i'm out of questions for now does anybody else from salem have any other questions it's fine guess we'll move on to the uh to the last uh, item discussion that's the uh, shared food services director agreement Jeff, you did you want to say? Yeah, I guess let me let me have Joe kind of start because I know uh, you know he's seeing, seeing uh, Chris Urban. Chris Urban's on the line uh, as well, I believe. I think I saw his oh. name. Um, so Joe, I'll let you kind of start off with uh, with that one. It was only an hour or so ago that Chris and I chatted in the hallway. Speaking of cohort changes, Amy, um, um, I. I, I need to, you know, I've shared with, with the East Line board before and certainly with the Salem board, my, my deepest respect for Chris as a professional. Um, not only are you creative, Chris, you're diligent and, and you certainly have rolled up your sleeves in so many different ways. Um, Chris was at school because we were short staff and, and he was uh, performing his magic with Natalie today. Uh, at least for part of today, but um, uh, you know we owe you a, a, a great deal of appreciation, Chris. You have juggled every day of the pandemic with us, and it's been incredible creativity. 
because staffing is fluid and short, you know, we're short staff and um, we, we have been, we had been in full in since um, August. We, we had a hiatus the Monday after Thanksgiving through the um, month, you know, through Martin Luther King Day, our students returned the day after. And um, you provided many meals um, while we were out and certainly when we're back in. So I, I have nothing but praise about that. And I have nothing but gratitude um, for the partnership that we share, Jeff, with you, uh, sharing you, Chris. Um, it's another example of, I think, if one can be thoughtful about sharing services, um, it, it can really benefit in many ways. And just today, Chris put out his uh, sort of save the date for Super Bowl, um, you know, uh, treats for students and, and, you know, getting people excited. So even in a pandemic where we have to look at each other on the screen, you have, um, you know, engendered a, quite a spirit in the school, Chris. So I thank you and I, I thank you, Jeff, for the, you know, the work together and, and both boards for allowing the uh, shared service. It's, it's, it's been incredible. It's the best delivery of food to our students in the nine years I've been in Salem. So thank you. Thanks, Joey. And Chris has really worked out a good system with, you know, when he's in East Lyme and where he needs to be, you know, and when in, in Salem. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll just reiterate the same. Uh, Chris has done a great job in East Lyme. Our program has just gone from, you know, basically in the red horrifically to, you know, into the black. And, you know, Chris is just all eyes on uh, on the work that needs to occur there and, and the programs and services for kids. So thank you, Chris. Thank you. Perfect. <laughs> Any questions on that one? Comments? Okay. Say, I was just going to say, Salem folks, while you have Chris in front of you, do you have any questions of Chris as the food service director? I don't have any questions, but as you know, I mean, I have a, a, a small child in school. She's in second grade and, and we certainly use the food program and you know, it, it has been great. It's been a really great service. It's really well run. It seems to be really well organized. The staff always have smiles on their faces when we do, if whether it's food pickup. So it's been a really great program just to kind of reiterate kind of what Joe's already said. Yeah, and you have a, you have a really good team at Salem um, with us having to switch over to room service um, for this year. Um, they really enjoy going and seeing the kids. Um, we put some of the cap aids um, into positions, helping out prepping and serving because uh, there is a lot more we have to do now um, with making sure everything's self-contained and uh, ready to go to all the rooms. And then, uh, like Joe said, when we had to shift gears quickly into curbside meals, um, fortunately from last year's experience from March, the team already knew what to do so they could jump right into that role of doing the curbside meals. Chris, I wanted to add that as uh, I'm, I'm involved in the, in the Moms Club of Salem and this summer, uh, it, it was well known that the Moms Club was just so grateful to have something to do to get in their cars. I, I, I think this was the whole spring when school was, you know, everything was crazy. And they were just, they'd all pile in their cars and go and, and visit you. And it was the big event of the day. And they were so grateful. Yeah, and it, it was, you know, a lot of parents said that was, that was their outing for the day. They, they could go out with the kids and pick up some food and got to see other faces and other adults and talk. And um, it was definitely good. And we tried to do special things, you know, for the kids. Uh, we did some stuff for Mother's Day and Father's Day. Um, Easter, we had a lot of, we had a lot of people who provided like um, Frito-Lay gave us a lot of stuff and um, Cabela's and um, some of the local stores and CVS. And they were, you know, it was, a, it was a whole community thing, which was great. Right. One of the sad one of the sad facts we've all learned in the pandemic is the incredible amount of food insecurity in the world, in the country, in our state, and in our immediate area. And Chris, by working with Kim and Jennifer back at our end, um, have really made it accessible. We've had high numbers of people taking advantage of of um, of, of meals. And we're grateful that the government allowed us to provide meals for everyone. 
who was willing to take them at no cost. Um, but it saddens all of us to have learned of the incredible food insecurity. Um, I'm hoping as we move past the pandemic, we don't lose that awareness and, and somehow can um, figure out a, a way to mitigate that as, as best we can. We should be able to do that, to be frank with you. Yeah, and there's a, they're extending this through June 30, June 30. So we, even after the school year ends, we will still do the curbsides um, through June 30. And then um, with the change in administration in Washington now, um, there's a real push for making this uh, like a going forward program where we would do the community feeding. Like it would be, uh, they would keep it free for everybody. They're, it's a real, they're, they know this is their opportunity if they're gonna push it through, this would be the year to do it. <laughs> Great. Okay. All right. Future agenda items. So when are we when are we scheduled to meet next, Tim? Uh, I'm not sure. Typically, we try to do the two times a a year. So May yeah. would typically be the, yeah. the identified next uh, next day somewhere in, in that realm. So we could shoot for uh, for that and get a, a date uh, out to folks and be square that away before. Uh, well, Joe's here until August, I believe. Correct, Joe? I think it's August. Yes, I am. And the co-op right, date on our calendar is May 17th. May 17th. So, Great. yeah. So far as future agenda items go, I think we could probably do a, a debriefing on where we are with our 21-22 with our, uh, budgets. And Salem, we could probably do an update on where we are with our administrative structure um, evaluation and our uh, ongoing search for uh, our superintendent. That would be very good. I was thinking the one thing that would be good to, to hear would be uh, a little bit of a comparison of um, what actions um, each district are taking uh, to help those students that have had, you know, more issues, more problems with dealing with the, the whole COVID situation. Um, and in particular, just because, you know, the, the kids all come together at the, at, the, at the high school level. So that might be good. I mean, we, we've just started conversations around potential su summer type programs. Um, and then I'm sure there, there may be other, other discussions about other, other activities as well. So it might be good to to hear where both districts are, um, kind of hopefully coming out of the COVID situation. Just last week, Tim, uh, at our weekly learn meeting, um, you, know, you know, we decided to create some uh, study groups for for both um, reco recovery um, and uh, certainly looking at how distance learning or virtual learning will fit into the future. But a whole separate conversation about recovery. Uh, folks are looking forward to the additional money uh, that we should be receiving to help assist us this summer um, with that and probably we'll need that going into the school year. Yeah, yeah, good. Anything else? Anybody else? No. Not for uh, number four. Tim, you ready for number five? The adjournment? Sure. Anybody want to make a motion to adjourn? I will. <laughs> I make a motion to adjourn. Well, that's a second. It. I, oh, I see Lee Mac. Oh, I'll give it to Tiffany. There you go. All a right. Second. So, Salem, All what right. do you say? Yep. yep. Motion made. Then we say seconded. Uh, yep. Salem says aye. Or and I'll we'll say aye too for East Lime. And uh, special thanks to uh, Mariana and Kim for doing a great job on yeah. all the reconciliation work. So it was really, really straightforward and clear. Excellent. Agreed. Thank you very much. Okay. We'll see you in May. All right, everybody. <laughs> Thank you all much. Right. And for our board of ed members, we've got to jump on a different Zoom uh, invite, uh, I believe. Correct? Everybody all set with that? Yep. Okay. Yeah, we, ours uh, do also. Yeah. Sound okay. as well. <laughs> all right. See you.